Welcome to the 18th lecture uh, in the open online course computer numerical control of machine tools and processes. So, uh, we have discussed uh, curved surface geometry, now we will discuss cutter path generation for cutter uh, curved surfaces. So, let us move uh, right into the subject. So, we will be discussing first of all forward steps and side steps which make up the cutter path. If you remember we had uh, we had discussed about cutter paths on a curved surface and we had also discussed that uh, uh, the cutter path has to be approximated by the cutter by straight line segments. It moves in small I mean short segments, straight segments to approximate a curved path. However, when we are taking this segmental, when we are carrying out this uh, linear segmental motion, the deviation that the cutter, the, the deviation this cutter path suffers from the designed surface, okay, the curved surface that has to be equated to a particular value which can be tolerated. If we take a very uh, you know uh, very very large value the surface will appear jagged and might not serve its purpose. If we take E to be very small then the surface will be appear appearing smoother and may be carrying out its you know required function also satisfactorily, but maybe lot of uh, effort will have to be given for manufacturing it. So, we have to go for a trade off and generally we try to make all these segments in such a way that at least what is tolerated that particular dimension is attained here. <coughs> so, this is one position of the cutter, this is another position of the cutter, it has moved from here to here and if we uh, ignore uh, external gouging at this moment then this is the path which shows the machine surface, this is the deviation, these are the two radii of curvature at these two points and we have to, we are at present residing here, we have to somehow calculate the second point at which the cutter arrives. <coughs> this shows the side step side step means that this is the first position of the cutter when it is executing a particular path perpendicular to the uh, plane of the paper and when it comes here it takes a side shift to start yet another path. In between it leaves behind this uncut material which looks like an upraised triangular portion it is called a scallop and it continues throughout between the two cutter paths. The and, and, and creates a characteristic roughness of the surface which is to be avoided at all costs. Since we cannot have zero roughness because there has to be a shift between two cutter paths, therefore here also we uh, define a particular tolerance value within which this cutter path, cutter uh, surface roughness, I mean cutter the, uh, the surface roughness created by the cutter, this has to be within the tolerance. and preferably this roughness should be the same everywhere. So, that all surface related effects or other surface roughness related effects will be uniform all over the surface like say for example, turbulence etcetera. So, this particular the height of the roughness which is created here it is called scallop height and the distance between the center uh, lines of the tool they are called this is called tool path interval and the distance between the cutter contact points is called the side step. So, there are three methods of cutter path generation if we consider the way in which we are defining the side step and these are called isoparametric. Uh, sorry side step and forward step isoparametric, isoplanar and isoscalar. 
what are their differences? The isoparametric method has cutter paths chosen as the isoparametric lines themselves. So, if the cutter paths are the isoparametric lines on the surface, they are easy to find out, they are easy to determine and therefore, this process is called uh, uh, known as computationally non intensive problem. Okay it is not very difficult to find out the cutter paths on the surface. So, obviously, we would always try to resort to isoparametric method of cutter path generation, if there are no other problems associated. What can be the other problems associated? The very shape of the curve. For example, say this is a particular surface and this in order to cut this surface, we are we have to decide whether we will go for isoparametric method or some other method. And see, due to some reason, we have to cut from this side. Okay, from this side, we have to come uh, bring, we take the cutter to the other side, not the other way, not this way. So, if that be so, with that precondition, we will find that if we are re um, this uh, resorting to isoparametric strategy of cutter path generation, then essentially these cutter paths will be you know uh, clustered at one end and they would be widely uh, diverging at the other. So, that obviously, the roughness which we will which will be generated on this at this end of the surface it will be much less than the roughness which will be created at this end because we can easily uh, make this statement without proof uh, by, by just observation that if the side step is higher, the resulting scallop height will also be higher. So, just for the sake of avoiding computational load, if we go for isoparametric method here, we are going to uh, have a problem and the problem is this that the roughness will definitely not be uniform and it will shoot up at this end. So, uh, this is the advantage of isoparametric machining non intensive computationally and this is the disadvantage of isoparametric method machining that surface roughness cannot be controlled all over the surface especially, especially for odd shaped jobs. Coming back we have another method which is called isoplanar. In this one, cutter paths are chosen along paths obtained as intersection of the surface with parallel vertical planes. So, I have parallel vertical planes just like that multiple choice question that we had. Just like a knife, I am going to slice the surface into different slices and those slice intersection curves are going to be my cutter paths. We will see a figure which will make it clear. And in the isoscallop method, we choose the cutter paths specifically such that the, the surface roughness created by those scallops will be uniform everywhere. So, this we have seen already. This is a, the def, depiction of isoparametric cutter paths, like if this is the machining direction, the cutter is moving this way, takes a side step here, comes back here and it is moving by zigzag method and ultimately the machine surface will look like this and these will be the cutter paths, scallops will also be you know up those upraised uh, portions will also be oriented in this direction. This is an example of isoplanar approach. What does it show? It shows those parallel uh, vertical planes which are uh, producing uh, cutter paths by intersection with the Bezier surface or for that matter any curved surface. This is the u direction, I am sorry the w has got obliterated somehow. This is the w direction that means, the two parametric directions are shown, the parallel vertical planes are shown and the cutter paths are obtained by the intersection of these planes and the surface. Now, one question uh, automatically appears that why are we doing this? what is the specific advantage that we have over say isoparametric method. So, uh, for that if you kindly remember that in the isoparametric method, we had a surface which was you know uh, 
wide uh, uh, it has it had a very wide edge and on one side and it was very uh, uh, i mean very narrow on the other side because of which the cutter parts were diverging at one end and clustered at the other but in this case since these cutter parts are parallel to each other i mean these uh, planes are parallel to each other their intersection lines with the surface they are not going to have any divergence that way that means their distance on the x y plane is remaining going, uh, is going to remain constant all through the cutter path extent but distance between two cutter paths might well be different from the distance between two other cutter paths but with in between two uh, successive cutter paths or adjacent cutter paths we are always going to have the same distance so that divergence which was occurring in isoparametric method is going to be avoided but mind you the roughness is still not going to remain same because roughness is a function of the side step which is remaining constant here the uh, what do you call it the radius of curvature of the cutter and the radius of curvature of the surface perpendicular to the direction of cut that is not going to be constant for even this isoplanar approach because that is unique to the surface it depends on the surface not on any other aspect that we are applying here so isoplanar method in more detail it looks like this and the observations that we have made just now the cut paths are obtained by intersection lines and that the surface roughness is still not uniform but of course the cutter paths are not diverging here uh, for some quick calculations involving uh, you know the uh, forward steps to be taken along this particular cutter path on an isoplanar uh, you know cutter path so how would we calculate the isoplanar forward steps first of all we observe that is this particular normal to this to this point say we are having this as our starting point and we are targeting this particular point I am here and I want to reach this particular point. So, for that we are saying that this is the normal at this point and it is obtained by the cross product of two of the tangents which are the u direction tangent and w direction tangent which we have already uh, understood how to calculate them I am afraid here we have used subscripts for the tangent depiction while we have up till now studied about uh, uh, tangents with superscripts they are the very same things but i am sorry for the deviation so it is divided by its magnitude in order to make it a unit vector so we have n as the unit normal vector at this particular point where the tool is touching the surface initially c is the vector which is tangent to this cutter path okay this is the curve obtained by the intersection of the plane and the surface and c happens to be the tangent to this curve this intersection curve and the starting point <coughs> sorry <coughs> now how to find out c we can argue that if c is tangent to this curve it is essentially a tangent to the surface which we studied in that mcq therefore it is essentially perpendicular to the normal because all tangents at a particular point on a surface will be perpendicular to the normal at that point to the surface so c is perpendicular to the normal n further since c is lying on the plane because essentially if the curve is part of the plane therefore c has to be part of the plane as well because c is tangent to the curve so if c is belonging to the plane lying on the plane therefore it has to be perpendicular to the normal to the plane as well and we have designated small p as the normal to the plane so c is perpendicular to the to n and c is also perpendicular to p which means that c can be obtained by the cross product of n and p and that is what we have written here unit 
uh, c vector okay tangent vector to the cutter path must be having this expression that means it can be solved this way if we know p and if we know n <coughs> now what we have done after this is that any tangent okay any tangent to the cutter path is basically having the expression as we have discussed previously uh, uh, sorry let me just uh, uh, look at it this way d r we are taking a small incremental distance on the surface small incremental distance on the surface how can we express this what we have said is that a small incremental distance on the surface can be expressed since it is a function of two uh, parameters u and w it can be expressed as partial in the u direction multiplied by uh, d u plus partial in the w direction multiplied by d w. This is a very standard uh, you know expression of the complete differential and it represents a small incremental movement along the surface from the point under consideration to another particular point whose value will be defined by these two finite differences delta u and delta w. So, I am essentially trying to move from this point to this point and I am saying that this particular distance that I am covering I can express it in terms of the partials in this manner partials and finite differences in this manner that is all quite good acceptable, but where does it lead to? It leads to this that we are now going to operate this particular movement that we have talked about operated by two conditions that we are going to apply on it. What, what are those conditions? If this happens to represent a movement on the cutter path, then it first has to be on the plane that is accepted yes. If it is made to represent the, uh, the movement on the cutter path then it has to lie on this plane. So, that we can uh, uh, in, uh, in that condition we can apply by saying that d r dot p must be 0 because if it is lying on the plane it must be perpendicular to p small p and therefore, d r dot p is 0 that is what we have written here. Second is we are saying that since you know we are talking about very small movements on the surface. Therefore, this can well be approximated to lie in the direction of the tangent at the starting point. So, that we can say that if we take the dot product with the tangent to the cutter path at this point with d r then essentially it is going to give me the magnitude of d r nothing else because d r this particular vector and the c vector we are assuming to be having absolutely the same direction d r is so small that it will be it will be you know in the direction of c only. So, having you know accepted that mentally we are writing d r dot c equal to delta now what is delta delta is the length of this segmental distance that the cutter is supposed to cover from the first point to the next point, but we do not know what is the what is going to be the length. So, we assume some guess value for the moment. Now, what is going to be the, this guess value for the time being say we are already in, uh, we have uh, applied this case and the last delta that we come up with that we are applying here. Okay. So, we write out these expressions as d r dot p equal to 0 here by applying you know the expression of d r from the uh, partials and the finite differences and we also write out this d r dot c equal to delta here. I do not know delta, so I put a guess value. So, how much do we know of this? So, we know r w uh, I mean r u we know r w which are the partials del r del u and del r del w. We know p if the plane is specified do we know c? Yes, it is the cross product of p and n. 
So, practically everything is known except delta u and delta w which makes them linear simul simultaneous that means simple simultaneous equations. Simple simultaneous equations will allow us to find out delta u and delta w which essentially means that from a point u comma v I can solve for a point u plus delta u comma v plus delta v which is going to you know uh, have the application of these two conditions successfully. What are those, those two conditions? That this particular segmental movement will end up somewhere on the plane itself along the uh, cutter path and this segmental motion will also have a length of delta. Having understood this, let us see the next development. Now, we uh, uh, take a global look at the results that we have obtained. First of all, if the second point, okay, second point we already have in our hand because now we have found out delta u and delta v and therefore, we have a numerical value of u 2 v 2, u 2 w 2 from u 1 w 1. So, we were at u 1 w 1, we have found out u 2 w 2, just to make you recapitulate this part. <coughs> These two expressions help us in find out u 2 w 2, <coughs> because the delta values are being found out. Once we have this, we say that in that case, we find out the radius values at these positions. Now, you might say, how do I know the radius value? Uh, please remember those formidable, uh, those formidable uh, expressions uh, I had shown you at one point in time uh, of the radius. We will come back to it once again. We employ basically those expressions. Now, if you say that, no, I, I, I could not understand it and I do not want to use it, fine. In that case, what we can do is we can draw normals. Normal at least has been found out very easily as the cross product of the, the two uh, partials and therefore, I can draw the normals. So, geometrically, I can draw the normals and let them intersect at some point and I will say that these are approximate values of R 1 and R 2 at these points. You might well point out another problem these normals are not lying on the same plane that they, they are not coplanar. In that case, we are having the plane the, the cutting you know that vertical plane with which we were intersecting project those normals onto the vertical plane. So, that they are now coplanar and find out their point of intersection. So, that you get R 1 and R 2. Now, are these going to be different? They can well be different because R 1 and R 2 they represent the curvatures of the surface at these two points and and at these two points they are you know they can have different values of curvature. So, R having found out R 1 and R 2 we take the mean value R 1 plus R 2 by 2 and do a calculation. What is this calculation? This calculation we bring in the value of the tolerance into the calculation we take this particular triangle which is right angle having hypotenuse equal to you know r 1 plus r 2 by 2 that is r mean r is this hypotenuse this side is r minus e e value is the we have equated it to the deviation and it will be uh, equal to the form tolerance say 50 microns. So, it will be available with us as a number. So, we have r square minus r minus e whole square equal to this particular distance and what is this distance? It is nothing but delta by 2. So, what do we have as known? We have found out r in this uh, that roundabout manner geometrically for example, we know the value of e. So, that this right hand side can be you know completely uh, worked out. So, we can get a value of delta by uh, putting in a value of r and putting in a value of e, but we already know delta, but 
this delta is coming from slightly different considerations that is the application of tolerance value. So, it might well not match with this delta I mean the delta that we have worked out from the surface considerations. If it does not match we take this new delta go back to the expression I go back to the calculations again find out the next point and that we find out another value of r and go on repeating this cycle as an iteration. So, after several iterations if we observe that whatever delta we put in at the beginning it is coming out as the same value from this calculation we accept that particular delta and move on to the next particular point and this method is called marching and this way we can find out the forward steps one after the other. So, to sum up let us have a quick look at the way in which we are moving get a point on the edge of the surface. So, we have to start from the edge this is the start point of a cutter path and this is the intersection of the edge of the surface and the vertical plane that you have started with and this is found out by something called curve plane intersection algorithm which I have not included here. So, after that we define a guess value of delta to go to the next point on the intersection curve and generally this guess equals the final delta of the last forward step. Apply the surface plane intersection algorithm to get to the next point on the surface on the cutter path that is obtain delta u and delta w refined by curve plane intersection algorithm once again I have not discussed it. Once you get u 1 w 1 and u 2 w 2 you can find out the normals at the two points take their projections on the vertical intersecting plane. Producing them backwards get the radii at the two points get their mean equal to r with the values of uh, say form tolerance say 50 microns and the radius r find the value of delta and if, if the guess value of the delta matches this value it is good we can start the next point then otherwise you again go back find out delta u and delta w are fresh with this new value of delta and iterate until and unless you get a convergence and this way the forward steps in isoplanar method can be found out. Thank you very much.